Yeah, Summer at the Movies. An opportunity for us to take movies that have biblical themes and share with you a message from God's Word. Hi, my name is John, one of the pastors here at Life Church, and I am so excited to be able to talk to you about what I see God telling us in the movie Star Trek. Yeah, I'm wearing the Enterprise symbol here and everything, but I just got to be honest, I am not a Trekkie. Okay, so where are y'all out there? Where's the Trekkies at? Let me see you. All right, let's give a hand for nine Trekkies in the audience. I, I really, you guys, I, I, I take my hat off to you. You know, it's quite a, quite a cult following, you know, they have. And I, oh, and not, a, not that kind of cult, but, you know, sort of like, well, we just love these, this thing. We got to go to every one, see every show. And, uh, it, but this movie was great. I mean, I enjoyed it. Uh, and it has some great themes for us here. So what's going on there? I'm just going to take a minute and, and give you a little bit of a rundown of the movie. And uh, don't worry, there's no spoiler alert here at all, you know. So uh, basically, you could see from the video there that uh, James Kirk, first of all, is having a little bit of an identity crisis. Like, hey, man, what, you know, I don't know. I just kind of joined on a dare, and now I, you know, I have to lead this ship. And, you know, what's this, you know, Boldly go where no one has gone before all about anyway. You know, and so the crew and everybody, they had to kind of find themselves. And the thing that brought them kind of to their knees was, you know, losing their ship. Okay. You know, they lost the USS Enterprise. Is anybody sad about that? It was so sad. And so uh, they're on the ground. They're, they're, they're fighting for survival. And, and, and the enemy in this particular movie, his name is Crawl. And he's just an evil, sinister creature who has this weapon and he wants to destroy millions of lives because he's really angry about some. I'll let you watch the movie, figure out what it is. But he has the power to really just destroy millions of lives and possibly the, take control of the whole universe. You know, except for Kirk and his crew in this stressful situation find themselves and grab hold of what their mission is and you know what i'll let you see the movie to see what happened but i thought to myself wow that's a lot like our world you know what if we're really honest about it our world is really full of evil right now i mean it's always been that way but it's really showing its face ugly head is is coming up you know you know, whether it's ISIS or, or whether it's uh, shootings here in our own city or whether it's, it's racist, uh, racism uh, and shootings and, 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 and people shooting back. And it's just so ugly and awful. You can't even turn on the news or radio without seeing some kind of awful thing going on in our world. And so I think to myself, what's going on? And I think people are asking that question, what's going on? And those of us that read the Bible know that truly the Bible says that the God of this world, Satan himself, has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And people can't see hope. They can't see an answer. They can't see a solution. And so it's up to the people of God to carry out their mission that, that reveals to the world that God has an answer to all of that anger, all of that pain. He sent Jesus that we've already talked about to die for all the faults and failures of everyone. All that pain, all that can be dealt with in people if they, if they found a new life in Christ. Like what so many of us have experienced, the world would change. That would be the truth. That's our mission. That would change everything. And that would give the world hope. And that's what the world needs. And so I want to challenge you today. Are you willing to boldly go on a mission from God? So when you leave here today, you can look at your neighbor and say, I'm on a mission from God. If you want to wear a black hat and sunglasses like the Blues Brothers when they did that, go right ahead. But it really is true. I want you to leave here today really feeling like you're on a mission from God. And when I, I've been in the church a long time, and, when, and whenever I'd hear this kind of talk, you know, we need to go out there and reach the world with the message of Jesus. You know, I, hey, I'm not, I would just like curl up and like, you know, I don't know. I mean, right now there's radio, TV, internet. I mean, we got Facebook all over the world, for God's sakes. You know, doesn't everybody know? Hasn't everybody heard of this message of hope? Well, the short answer for that is no. Like, 
Not even close, no. I did a little research uh, on a website called The Joshua Project, and I found this amazing chart that did some research, finding out, you know, are, are, is, the, is, the, is God's message getting out there? And I want to point out, first of all, the upper left red one of the unreached people group. And do you see that staggering number there of people who are unreached? Over 3 billion. It's like over 43% have not been reached. And if you look at the lower left, the green one significantly reached, it's only 1.4 billion, only barely 20%. And so if you think the word's gotten out there, the truth is it's not. And that's a tragic thing. There are over 3 billion people who are going to go into eternity not knowing about Jesus. And that should cause some of us to feel some heaviness and sadness. We need to have a moment. Like, like the kind of moment I had when I walked into the Holocaust Museum. Have you been there in, in Farm, on Farm, Farmington Hills or West Bloomfield? And just see the horrors of what happened during Nazi Germany and in the concentration camps. And then when I go to the African American Museum downtown and I see the, the atrocities done to slaves and the awfulness of this history that we have that's so awful in our country. And I just, I just feel heaviness when I'm in places like that. That's how I feel when I look at this chart. That's how I feel. And I pray that all of us would have that heaviness and say, oh, my goodness, we got a lot of work to do. We got a long ways to go. And I hope that by the time you leave here today, you're not only uh, motivated to get involved in God's mission, but you know something that you can specifically do. I want to answer three questions here today. What is our mission? Just clarify it a little bit. Why are so many people not doing, and what can we expect if we do it? But let's bow our heads and pray. God, thanks so much for this mission that you have entrusted us with. It just boggles my mind that you even uh, want to include us in it. And, Lord, we're just heavy right now knowing that there's so much more work to be done, God. And we want to know what you're telling us to do here today. So I pray you would use my words, that you would use your word, that you would use uh, everything that we do here today to draw us all into a better understanding of what you want for us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's dive in here. We're in Matthew 28, 18, and this is at the end of Jesus' ministry here on earth, and he has died, he has risen from the dead, and he is on this mountain commissioning his, commissioning his disciples to go out and carry out this mission. And here's the words he says. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Man, what a staggering thing to ask of these disciples. I mean, it just the, 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 the enormity of the task is one thing, but you know what else kind of blows my mind is what he says, who is asking. He says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. We're talking about the God who has authority over the entire universe. You know, and if you've been on, been on the websites of what the Hubble telescopes, and probably the Trekkies are the ones doing that, right? You watched in deep space, you know, what's going on in all the billions of stars and billions of galaxies, and we barely know this much about what's going on in the universe. And Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. That's powerful. And so when we're asked to do something, sometimes, like if someone asked you right now, came up, tapped you on the shoulder and said, you need to move your car here. Can you move your car? You might ask, like, well, who's asking? Like, for who? All right? Like, why bother me? And they said, well, you know, actually the motorcade just pulled up. It's, it's you know, President Obama, and, and if you don't move, we're going to tow it, you know? Like, who's asking makes all the difference in the world. And the God of the universe is asking each one of us to go and make disciples of all nations. Where we want to, in short, what is our mission? We call it sometimes the Great Commission because it is a great task and it's, it's a great opportunity. It's communicating to others the good news of Jesus. Real, real simple. 
his message of hope, his message of bringing new life to people, his message of him building a relationship with others. And as we already have talked about in the worship service, that he loves us, even us. It's a powerful message. It's a message that will literally change the world. It is communicating clearly to everyone in the world that God loves them and that through the sacrifice of Jesus, he's made a way for them to have a life-changing relationship with God. And that's what we call here at Life Church. We want people to know him. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity, and it's a challenge to all of us. But let me just be honest with you. I've struggled this in, in this area pretty much my whole life. And it started when I was a kid. You know, I would hear, I'd be in church, and I would hear this message. You know, I, 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 50, I like have a 50 anniversary here where I raised my hand as a five-year-old and asked Jesus into my life. Okay, praise God for that. But that started a journey to figure out what all that meant. And I would hear this challenge, go and tell your friends, go and tell your neighborhoods. And I would sit there and think, oh, my gosh, I'm, like, shy. I can't string three words together without stuttering. Like, how in the world? I know some of you are like, really, you? Yeah, yeah, me. I was that bumbling idiot, that kid who couldn't say nothing, a kid who just afraid to just lose his mind if he ever had to speak in front of people. And, wow, here I am, huh? Praise God. But at that time, I was so fearful. And this challenge would just, just rip up my heart because I'm not doing it. No. I, so I just kept my mouth shut for most of my childhood up into my teenage years. I hope some of your teens are listening here right now because I can relate to that anxiety. I can relate. People don't want to hear, oh, my friends, they're partying. They're having a good time. They don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to hear about any God who's going to make them change their lifestyle. They're having a good time. But somewhere between my junior and senior year, I went to a summer camp, and I got challenged by a guy to really think twice about what I was going to my senior year for. And he said to me, so what are you going to do in your senior year? I said, man, I'm going to be playing basketball and football. I'm going to get a nice date for the prom. You know, I'm going to have a, he's like, really? Is that what you're going to do? He said, what are you going to do for God? And I'm like, ho, oh. ho. Hey, well, yeah, I don't know, man. I just have to think about that. Well, those words just, just kind of continued to haunt me and continued to challenge me. Where finally I just said, that's it. I'm going to do something my senior year if it kills me. And, man, we got, I got some pushback, you know. They found out I was in church. I was in the singing group. You know, I was going to this youth meeting that where we were inviting our friends to. And, and, and I wasn't partying and all this other stuff. And they would make fun of me like, hey, dude, you're going to get drunk on chocolate milk this weekend. <laughs> and that was a big joke. You know, John and his buddies, they got, they got high on chocolate milk, you know. And uh, we just went with it, man. They're like, dude, yeah, I'm doing a, a 40 today, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, just, just had to push through some of that, deal with it, you know. And, uh, and so uh, we had this youth, these youth meetings, and we're trying to invite our friends, and they were kind of fun meetings. And so I had this, this friend on my basketball team. His name was Kevin. And uh, Kevin, was, he was just crazy. He was foul-mouthed, dirty jokes, a whole bit, you know, partying. And, I, and I'm like, this dude is wild. I knew him since he was a freshman. It's our senior year. And finally, I'm like, that's it. I'm inviting him. And so he... He, he's like, what are we going to do there, man? Drink chocolate milk? I'm like, yeah, we might do it. But, you know, you might just have a good time. We play games. And, you know, it's kind of like our youth meetings. Our youth meetings are really cool, aren't they, guys? We have great, great, great youth meetings. And they speak about God in a relevant way. And in one of these meetings, he heard the message of Jesus. And he gave his life to the Lord. I'm like, whoa. And now he didn't become a, a saint or a preacher or anything right away, but he started growing. He started being involved in church and, and started to learn a little bit more about what it meant. And then the night before we graduated, he was tragically killed in a car accident with a train. And I was just so torn up, man. It was the saddest funeral I've ever been to. But one of the happiest, too, because the pastor stood up and said, Kevin wasn't perfect, but Kevin was prepared for eternity. And I was just so thankful that God would use a bumbling idiot like me and a lot of other people to bring this brother to Christ. And I'm looking forward to seeing him again. 
you know, but sometimes we just kind of get in a funk and we're thinking, ah, somebody else is doing it. The job's getting done somewhere. You know, what am I going to do? Because we think about, right away we think, oh, this must mean knocking on doors and passing out tracts. This must mean, you know, getting in people's face and challenging them with Jesus. And this must mean, you know, uh, big evangelistic crusades. And, and, and you know what? It might be some of all of that. But that's not all of it. It might just be you sharing your faith with gentleness and respect, as the Bible says. And so I just want us to all think about where it is that we're to be involved. It says we're to reach all nations, all ethnos, all ethnic groups, all people groups, everywhere, anywhere, where anybody has never heard about Jesus in a relevant way. They may have grown up in church. They may be in a house next door to you and never go to church and never hear about it, not even know what the Bible's talking about. Never forget my youth group in Highland Park. There's like churches in every corner. And, 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 and I was trying to talk to the kids about the book of Daniel. And I said, hey, y'all know what Daniel did, right? They're like, he killed Goliath. I'm like, no, that's the other guy. Daniel, oh, let's see. Uh, he took him across the sea. Uh, you know what? I'm like, okay. Daniel, like, was in a den of lions. You know, all, like, you guys have never read the Bible? Come on. Those are the people that need to hear. They never read the Bible. They don't know what it says. And, and God wants people to know. He wants the world to hear a message of hope. And we here at Life Church have that opportunity to do that. Many of you have indicated that you've made commitments to Christ in you since you've been here. You're okay with inviting your friends here. You feel like it's a place where they could hear it in a way they can understand it. And I thank God for that. And we were planted by Life Church Canton. And Canton has planted another church in Livonia. And between the three churches, I guess we're up over, what, 1,600 people that are being reached? Or more, more like, like 1,800. Praise God. Let's give God a hand. Okay, we're not just talking about butts and seats, okay? We're talking about changed lives here, people getting hope and healing. And we, one day, will plant a church somewhere, probably around this city somewhere, and that will be an exciting time, an opportunity to reach more. The Bible talks about how we need to go on uh, in, in, in Matthew 28, 19, to baptize them in the name of of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And we've already talked about that, the idea of baptism, and we'd like to invite some of you to sign up to be baptized. Man, it's a great experience. You'd love it. And you know what? You can go, if you want to get married, you know, you can go down to the Justice of the Peace, and you can, you know, get married, and that's, you're done. you got the little piece of paper. But if you want to have a wedding, you have a celebration, right? Baptism's like that wedding. It's like that opportunity to be initiated into the kingdom of God in a, in a, in a, in a way in your community and people celebrate. And, and that's what the, they were doing in the other church, early church. They were baptizing people as a public statement. I'm following Jesus. And then they go on to teach them everything, uh, taught how to obey everything that Jesus commanded. That takes a long time, and that's a long process. We're not talking about that process right now, but you're doing it right now. You're here in church, learning God's word. Some of you in small groups. We encourage more of you as we start small groups in the fall to join so you can grow deeper. And that grow part is really important because then we got to go from the grow to the go. But as I've uh, already mentioned, sometimes that's the hardest part. It seems like we get right on the verge of wanting to go, and then we get bogged down we get we get we get stuck and I just want to talk for a few minutes about why are so many people not involved in the mission God has for us well I think there's three things and the first one is I think a lot of people think it doesn't apply to them you know like like maybe uh, it's for pastors and teachers and evangelists people with the gift of evangelism and we lose track of the fact that think about Sunday morning where we have this wonderful worship team, all these musicians. Well, we have an amazing setup team to get all this stuff ready. I, we, I have an amazing connections team. I just love all of you so much. You help me every week get, the, get everything set up in there and hospitality. And, and, uh, and, and the kids' ministry is phenomenal. I've been inviting people to church. I'm like, hey, man, the kids' ministry, is just, just stick your kids in there, and you come out here and enjoy yourselves free of your kids for an hour and a half or an hour and 15 minutes. It's wonderful. And they learn about God in their own special way. 
But what does it take to make all that happen? It takes all hands on deck. There's a lot of people involved. And I just happened to come out early one morning and find a couple of people that are helping us with the Great Commission. And there they are, wheeling these gigantic monstrosities across this bumpy parking lot for our kids' ministry. That's all the kids' ministry supplies. You guys don't see that when you get here. That's all done. And thank God Mike's still here. Calvin, he went on to Phoenix, Arizona. God called him on to another place. So we need about five more people to replace Calvin. So if you are thinking, like, maybe that's you, would you please sign up with us at the info table? No, seriously, if you're not involved in the mission here at Life Church, let me just invite you to come on in and be a part of it. You can enjoy the, the pleasure of knowing the lives that have been impacted. You'll, you'll, you'll be more engaged. You'll, you'll enjoy services a lot more, and you'll see God using you in his great commission. There's another reason I think people are not involved in the Great Commission. That's just they're busy doing other things. And that could be a lot of things. Maybe it's just, you know, working at your job. You know, you got to work at your job and make enough money to buy your house, to buy uh, a lot of things. And then you got, you're busy managing all the things that you got. Now, is any of that wrong? Absolutely not. But sometimes I think we got too many high standards. We could buy too many things, and we have to work too many hours to buy all these things. And then we got to manage all these things. I mean, Jackie and I, we're not rich, but we got a lot of stuff. And you buy stuff, and it gets broken, and you take it back, and you bring it home, and you're fixing things, and you're underneath stuff. And it just, just saps all your time and energy sometimes. And, and we talk about, hey, maybe I think we should buy a condo and have, like, one room. You know, we'd be so free to do stuff for God. Well, it's probably not going to happen, but you know what? I think all of us need to have that conversation. Hey, do we got too much stuff? Are we, are we working too many hours? Can we eliminate some of this and give more time to God's work? Something to think about. Or maybe uh, you're just busy with activities. Just You're involved in this club, that group, this committee, that committee. And again, none of that is wrong. This team, golf, bowling, baseball, you name it. And, and again, nothing wrong with any of that. Or maybe you should eliminate some of that so you can get more involved in the work of God. Now, the other option is to take both of those things and transform them into ways of reaching people for, for God. And so, like, maybe you take some of the stuff you have uh, and use it to help others meet God. We had a friend, he owned a beautiful house out in Jackson, way out in the woods. And he would take his hunting friends out there who don't know God, and they would hunt deer. I know some of you hate that. But it was a way for him to connect with them, these businessmen, these wealthy businessmen, on these rugged man journeys in the woods. He used his resources for the kingdom. Or maybe you got a boat. Boats are great ways to reach people for God. I had a, a guy in our church, he took me water skiing for the first time, you know, and, 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 and I was able to be with a lot of other church people having a good time. You know, but I thought maybe if you have a boat, like you could take a bunch of people out, way out in the, in the water when the waves are going and, 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 you know, the winds are going, and then you just have a little talk with them. Hey, guys. <laughs> This is the end, you know? Do you want to, Jesus, you know? <laughs> bad, bad idea. I'm sorry. I don't know why I get carried away like that. Um, but you know what I'm saying, right? Use your stuff or use your activities for the kingdom as well. Use, use your, your committees or your sororities or your fraternity groups as opportunities to infiltrate those groups with some message of hope through your life. And I'm convinced that no matter what you belong to, and, and young people, listen to me, your school is your mission field, okay? P folks, your jobs, that's your mission field. Your neighborhood, your neighbors, it doesn't matter wherever you are and wherever your life takes you, that is your mission field. You've got to change the way we think about what we're doing every day, all our busyness. Let's transform it into something eternal. And, you know, maybe for some of us, and I know uh, my life has been a little like this the last six to nine months, and some of you heard me in sermons kind of whining and crying about, oh, my job, and oh, I got to drive bus now, and oh, this stuff, and poor me, you know. 
And uh, some of you are like, can that guy ever get it together? And I'm like, <coughs> well, thank God I am getting it together. But you know what? While I'm in the trenches, instead of complaining, I decided to use that as my mission field. You know what? Bus driving is my mission field. These kids need to see someone who can give them hope. Someone who can, maybe even, I invited a lot of them to church as well. And so I, I just think that no matter where you are, whatever your struggle is, you're, you're trying to survive. And you think, I don't have time to tell people about God because I'm just, too, I'm just trying to survive. Well, take your survival. And, you, and connect with the people in your survivor moments. I know a lot of you, like even Rebecca here, was in the hospital recently. I mean, that's a t she had a heart attack. She's here. Wow. Praise God. I mean, <laughs> you, did you really have a heart attack? Wow. I mean, it just blows my mind, you know. Thank God. A massive one. Yeah, sure. And you're just walking around like nothing. Um, no, I thank God. I thank God for that. That's a great testimony, those people in that hospital room. You know, again, you're not healthy enough to go, you know, on some kind of mission trip or on some kind of uh, opportunity to uh, some program of the church, but you're carrying Christ wherever you go. So think, just don't let, don't let anything be an excuse for you. Everything you do, bad or good, difficult or easy, is an opportunity to reach people with a message of hope. Let's never forget that. Thirdly, I think a lot of us, are not involved because we think we don't know how. You know, like, it's supposed to be for pastors and teachers, people who can, you know, speak the word of God, you know. I mean, you got to have a master's degree or a Bible degree. And I say, all you need is a testimony. <laughs> uh, am I original with that? I don't know. I just came up with that. Maybe. Maybe some other guy used that before. But I think it's kind of cute, right, testimony? And I, and, but let me tell you what I mean, all right? I know John's getting weird again. Um, what I mean is you, you, you got your story to tell. You know, you got an opportunity to tell people where you've been, what God has saved you from, what he has done in your life since then. You have a story. You have an opportunity for people to see God in your life. But you got to tell them about it. You can't hold it in. We try to be transparent up here and, and, and tell you, yeah, man, we were screwed up here and God helped us here. You know, because we want you to do the same thing wherever you go. You're able to tell people, man, I was strung out on drugs, and I was just, he had seen the drug man every week, or I was dealing drugs, or, or, or I, was, I, was, I was making big money, man. I was, had businesses all over the place, and my family was falling apart. And I, whatever the thing crisis was, I turned to Jesus, and he, he gave me a new purpose and a new reason to live. And I, and I began to change my life. That's your, that's your story. That's your opportunity to help other people hear about what God has done. You know, and, 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 and for some of you, uh, you got to be careful here because you don't want to be high, strung out on drugs and drinking and partying and then tell people about Jesus at the club. Okay, not good. Okay, just, just, just pretend you're not in life church if you do that. <laughs> that's right. You don't go here. We don't know you. <laughs> All right? But that doesn't mean just because you might be struggling in an area that you should be quiet. Because you can take, you know, join hands with fellow strugglers and say, you know what? I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. And I want to take you with me as we go and find a solution together. You know, they found out that that really worked with AA. When it first started, it was such a great movement. People were finding deliverance from alcoholism. There's, there was a swarm of people coming in, and they said, what are we going to do? This, this is all based on small groups and, and sponsorships, and we don't have enough leaders. And they said, well, let's just make some of the new guys leaders. Okay, so they asked these guys to lead these groups. They're like, well, we don't know. We just knew. They're like, do it anyway. You know, we need you. And you know what they found out? Those leaders grew more than anybody else, and the movement flourished. You see, as we're taking people along with us, we grow. So don't, don't make that as an excuse either. i got to get my stuff together, and then I'll tell people about Jesus. Man, I'm still getting my stuff together, okay? I wouldn't tell anybody about Jesus 
if I had it together, like I want to have it together. So don't, don't let that be an excuse. Don't let that stop you. You know, David, King David, said these words in Psalm 40 that I really appreciate. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. Can anybody testify that they felt like they'd been in the slimy pit, in the mud and mire? I got my hand up, folks. I know. It was God that got me out. He put my feet on a rock. He gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth and him a praise to our God. And here's the result. If you are giving praise to God, if you're telling people your story, this is what will happen. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Tell your story. Make sure people hear that it's God that got you out of that mess. What can we expect when we get involved in the mission? We've got all the excuses out of the way. Now we're ready to go, right? Now we gotta, now we got to find out some, some, some strength and some resolve and some direction. And verse 2820, I think, helps us with that. It says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is very critical to know because the job's going to be a hard one. Let's watch this next clip and just see what the Starship Enterprise crew had to go through to get their mission accomplished. They're boarding us. Abandon ship. Oh my God. I know why you're here, why we are all here. Our captain will come for us. Mercy will be the last thing on his mind. I am counting on it. Fear of death is illogical. Fear of death is what keeps us alive. Everyone who goes there, he kills. That's our friends out there. We can't just leave them behind. Unity is not your strength. It is your weakness. I think you're underestimating humanity. Hold on to something! Fire will! Do it! Do it! All right. Makes you want to go, huh? If you didn't go. Anybody go see it already? Okay. A few, a few of you. You know, um, in order to do God's mission, just like the Starship Enterprise, they needed to have some resolve. They needed to have some endurance, some patience. They were going to go through a very difficult season. And also, Crawl, that evil guy in there, uh, he's, he's trying to deceive them. He's trying to discourage them. Folks, if you're going to go out and take the message of Jesus to a dying world, to people who need it, you're going to have to go into enemy territory. Okay, you, it, 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 I wish that we could see, you know, what's going on on a spiritual level when we go and tell people, when we have church service even. The enemy is busy. He is actively trying to stop our mission, just like Crawl was trying to stamp them all out, wipe them all out. And a little spoiler warning, Kirk and his crew don't die. <laughs> I know that's just blowing it for you. You don't even want to go now, right? Well, they got to make a fourth movie, right? So, yeah, they don't die. No. And if God could fast forward for all of you, you would see that in your mission, you win. You win. Amen. And so we need to know that we can expect, number one, God's power and presence in our lives. He says, I will be with you to the very end of the age. He's not just saying that, yeah, you know, I'll be around for you. You know, don't worry about it. I'm always there for you. No, he's saying, if you say today yes to the mission, if you're going and making disciples, however you do it and wherever you do it, I am with you in that disciple-making moment. I am with you, and I will never leave you, even though it's hard, even though it looks like it's not happening, it's not working, that person's not responding. I've asked this person to church 57 times just last month, and they're not coming. <laughs> Keep praying for them, 
Maybe stop asking for a while, though, but keep praying. They might say, I feel people come to the door. Yeah, they were bugging me to come, so I came, you know. And, you know, it was a herb posted something on Facebook, a 92-year-old guy getting baptized. I mean, can you imagine people gave up on him? Oh, that old guy's got his mind made up. He'll never come around. Man, you don't, you underestimate God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He takes every prayer, every effort, every time you try to go, and he infiltrates it with his power in his presence. And if you're not feeling his power in his presence, maybe you need to go and do more. And then you'll find it there. You will have more passion and purpose in your life. Every time you get up and go to work, praise God. I'm going to my mission field. Every time your kids, at school's around the corner, man. I'm telling you, just a month from now, you'll be in this classroom again. I know, I'm sorry to spoil your day. But you got to start thinking ahead. Hey, i got to get myself ready for my mission field at Southfield High, at University High, or wherever you're going, West Bloomfield, Farmington. That's your mission field. You have more passion and purpose to go to your job, to wake up and see your neighbors, no matter how annoying they might be. God has you there for a reason. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You'll have more passion or pur and purpose. And if you continue, and if we continue as a church, we have the promise that we will see the eventual transformation of ourselves, our families, our churches, our communities, and the entire world. Amen. We win. We know that it'll take Jesus coming back to finally fulfill it all. But he wants us to be engaged in the process until he comes again. Are you ready? Are you ready to answer the call that God has on you today? I'd like to invite the band to come up as I get ready to close. Are you ready to get involved in this unstoppable Mission. I want us to be like the disciples that Jesus spoke to in Matthew 9. He said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. You know, when I see all the tragedy going on around our world right now, I feel like that's a harvest field. People are hurting. People are angry. People are, are, are looking for an answer. They're looking for hope. And they need to hear this message. They need to hear it from someone like you. Maybe we're like Isaiah in Isaiah 6, 8, where God is in God's presence and God says, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here I am. Send me. Are you ready to respond? to God's call today are you willing to say these words to God today here I am send me let's bow our heads for prayer some of you listen to my voice today are like well you know I'm, this is really cool this commission and great commission and everything but I kind of don't even like belong to the family yet I, I haven't even made a decision that I want to follow Jesus but after I hear you talking Pastor John I feel like God's tugging on my heart and it's time to let go of, of my selfishness and my self-centeredness and my just just I need I need God in my life and I would like to ask Christ into my life today if you're ready to do that I'd like you to raise your hand with every head bowed and every eye closed as, as you raise your hand and as you make that decision today just invite him to come into your life and invite him to, to, to save you from yourself save you from the sins you've committed against him the things that you've done faults and failures because Jesus died for all of that that can all be washed away you can be a new person today just invite him to come in and do that right now and he'll come in pray that prayer today. I'd like you to mark it on your connection card. I gave my life to Jesus today. I'm going to ask Christ into my life today. And we want to come alongside you and hand your card to someone at the info table and I'll give you a Bible and we'll talk about how to follow up and encourage your faith. But then there's a lot of others here and you want to make a refreshed commitment to get involved in the Great Commission. You want to come to the info table and say, sign me up. I want to help with Life Church. You want to say, I have been lacking. I need to make a commitment to do something more in my workplace, in my school, in my neighborhood, in my family. And I want you
want you to share that with somebody today. I want you to get somebody as a prayer partner with you to join in faith that that'll bear fruit in your life. But you want to make that commitment now. Let's just all commit ourselves. God, we thank you for engaging us in this great commission. God, thanks that there is hope for the world. Thanks that there's hope for us. Thanks for this hope for our loved ones, God. And we pray. Lord, that you would help us to have wisdom to know how to go forward, who to go forward with, God. I pray, God, that we would not give up the mission. We would not give up on people, Lord, that you want to bring to yourself, Lord. Pray that you would make us more bold to go on a mission for God today. God, I pray, Lord, that you would give us the endurance and patience, Lord, and you would give us, Lord, the faith as a church, Lord, to see more come to you and to get ready, Lord, give birth to another church down the road. We give you all the praise and thanks for this time in your word today. In Jesus' name.